Hello, Brian here. Uh, just doing a quick update on RenderMan for Blender. Um, we released a 21.3 release uh, today with a couple of big updates in it, so I wanted to go over those for people. This will be a pretty quick video. And I also wanted to ask a couple of questions that came up on, uh, on YouTube. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to post them uh, below, and I'll get to them in a later video. Okay, so like I said, we have a 21.3 release uh, for Blender. If you go to the GitHub page under releases, you'll see a 21.3 release. I also put out a release that takes out PXR Surface. Um, this is basically for people who have AMD Phenom chips. and uh, Or if you have a really old PC and... Um, and have a Core 2 processor. Um, so either the Core 2 processors or the uh, AMD Phenom chips. Uh, both of them don't work with PXR Surface, uh, the PXR Surface material. So what I did was I made a release that takes out the PXR Surface material and just uses PXR Disney. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use the... Um, material conversion because that's specifically made to work with PXR Surface. Um, but anyway, it will be an easier way for people who have older machines to use uh, to use the the plugin. Um, so yeah, that, sh that should all be on the GitHub page. Um, the other cool thing that we have um, is we now have an auto-updater. Um, the guys that... Um, uh, CG Cookie, they uh, made this freely available code for people to use that lets you auto-update uh, uh, Blender add-ons. So if you go to the um, uh, the plug-on preferences here in uh, in your user preferences of Blender, uh, under here, maybe people don't actually know this, but you can expand this. Under here, you'll see now there's this update settings area, and it will actually uh, auto check for if there's any updates on GitHub, and it will it will prompt you in the uh, in the settings here to to update your plugin if you haven't for a while. Uh, you can also um, uh, you can also update it manually here. Um, you can also uh, it will. It will if if you have older versions, it'll let you like install the old versions here, and um, and will you can also check like I said manually here for for update. But anyway, it's just keeping people up to date with like the latest code. So when there's bug bug fixes that we put in, you should be able to get them automatically. You don't have to download anything anymore. So that's really cool. Thanks to the guys at uh, CG Cookie for that. Uh, okay, so uh, the other big feature added is baking, um, and both of these. These features were done by uh, Jdent. Um, a, you might have seen him on the forums or on uh, answering questions on GitHub. So baking. Uh, baking look, works a little different in RenderMan than it does with the cycles baking. Basically, the way it works is, so I have a cube here, and I have a check, and I, normally I would have my checker texture. Let's just do this here. So normally I'd have my checker texture Let's say, you know, I want a checker pattern on my cube. I'd have the checker pattern going into my uh, my Disney shader here. But what you can do with the bake, with the bake uh, texture thing is you can actually just put it in the middle of your nodes. So you can control where, where and what you want to uh, bake in the, uh, in the node editor. So you just create this PXR bake texture node and put it in the middle of wherever you want to bake. Um, this would be useful if you want to, like, you know, bake a, a big shader network for using for a game, um, that sort of thing. But, uh, so simply you have to add this node here, and then you'll see there's a, there's a uh, uh, file path here. So I changed it. I told it to write to my desktop uh, with a file named foo.tiff. And uh, you can change the type of file if you want OpenEXR, Pixar Textures, or TIFF files. I'm just going to do TIFF here. Um, and what this will do is 
So we have a bake button. Oh, the other thing to remember here is that this only really works if you if you uh, unwrap your um, if you UV unwrap your uh, your object that you're baking. So you'll notice somewhere on here it's saying to use the S and T values, which is what you get when you unwrap something. Uh, anyway, so um, the, it needs to find those values, and if you don't UV unwrap, you won't be able to find those. Um, okay, so once you have this all set up here, uh, it will. I can go and hit the bake button here, and it will launch the the local queue application, which will which will make this baking job. Here's my baking job, and this will write out the textures where I told it to, which was on my desktop. So if I go and look at the desktop here, here's the checker texture that was written out from there. Now, when I go and render, um, it will use the texture from here rather than pulling it in from the, che the checker node. Now imagine you had a big, huge shader network. This would be really, it, it really speeds things up quite a bit because rather than reading on, well, you know, imagine there's a huge shade network to the left here. Um, it will, rather than reading, or, you know, evaluating that whole shader network, it will just read in the texture. So normally you would put these bake nodes uh, closer to the BXDF, usually the inputs to the BXDF. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so it will read in that texture there. If it finds it, if I go and delete that, it will just, it will just read in from the, uh, the node network that's going into the bake texture node. Um, so anyways, it will read in this texture rather than, um, rather than evaluating the shading network. Okay, so, uh, that's about it for that. Um, and I think, uh, I think John will do a longer video, uh, talking about baking, but that's, uh, that's just a quick overview of how that works. Um, so other changes for 21 to 3, there's been a lot of bug fixes, uh, other pretty minor stuff. You can look at the, you can look at the release notes on GitHub. If you've never seen those, those are, um, right here. Uh, here's all the release notes, uh, under change log. Um, the other big thing is that the IPR should be a lot faster when you're changing materials. Um, that was just uh, just some updates to that. Okay, so um, we had a question from uh, one of the YouTube videos. I forget the user, but I'll I'll, I'll uh, credit him in the um, in the uh, notes here. Uh, he his question was, why do I want to use VCM, the VCM integrator versus the Pixar Path Tracer integrator? So quick overview, uh, in the sampling settings here, you ha you can choose your integrator, and there's a there's a path tracer integrator. There's actually a bunch of different integrators. Uh, the occlusion integrator, if you just want to do an occlusion render. Uh, but the main ones are the PXR path tracer and VCM. PXR path tracer will operate much like uh, Cycles does. VCM is a bi-directional path tracer. Um, and I'll get into that really quickly. Um, in his questions, he mentioned, you know, I know that the... Um, the VCM integrator works really well with caustics, but why else would I want to use it? So um, VCM, like I said, is a bi-directional path tracer. So what that means is when we render this scene here, I have a Cornell box, and I have it set up with a glass, uh, uh, a glass monkey here. So let me just go and show the render here. So this was the render with PXR path tracer, and you'll get this uh, caustic here. So what that is, is light rays coming from the light here, focusing through the, uh, through the monkey, and then, you know, you get this sort of, like, focused area of light rays down here on the floor. That's called caustic. Um, to turn those on, just as a quick note, if you don't know this, uh, you should go to your light setting, and you'll see this setting for trace light paths. Uh, basically, you can control which lights you want to emit caustics from. Uh, okay, so this is, like I said, PXR Path Tracer. You can actually do caustics with PXR Path Tracer. Let's just make this bigger so it's more more viewable for the users here. And then 
fit image to window. Okay, so PXR Path Tracer and then PXR VCM. You'll notice we get a little bit uh, cleaner, cleaner caustic here. So what's happening is that with VCM, it's a bidirectional path tracer. So it's tracing rays from the uh, from the light and from your your camera rays. So the camera rays going into the scene, hitting a spot here, and it's also tracing rays from the light. And wherever they meet here, it sort of merges the paths of the of the uh, rays. So long story short, you end up getting a cleaner caustic. But um, the second part of his question was, where else would I want to use uh, VCM? So it's useful there for um, uh, for getting uh, getting cleaner caustics. Where else might you want to use it? Well, um, so there's another there's another example where you might want to use VCM, which is when there's like hard rays defined in your scene. So let's say for example. Uh, here, I'll move this over a little more. So now I have a, I have a scene here. It's a little, a little hard to see. Maybe I can, if I get to the side here, I can do it a little better. So what I have is I have a, I have a plane in front of the light here. So basically, like the, you know, imagine something like a sconce or something on the wall, or you know, like a a light that's a light that's sort of hidden, but you want to light the scene. So the render will end up being something like like this, okay? Uh, let's make this bigger again. Okay, so, yeah, here's our Cornell box. Now we have a light that's in here that's sort of hidden from view. And you notice that we get a lot of noise here. And the reason is, with a with um, with the Pixar Path Tracer, any, any forward Path Tracer, um, you're going to be shooting rays into the sea, it's going to be hitting a spot here, and then it's going to try to find a, a way to the light. And when the light is sort of hidden behind stuff, it's very hard for the light, the, um, the, it's hard to find a path to the light, basically. So again, because, uh, because VCM is tracing, is, uh, tracing rays in both directions, both from the light and from the camera, um, it's able to merge those paths, these hard paths here, a little better. Uh, so we got a little bit cleaner uh, render here with with VCM, and I, I did these both with low samples, just trying to show show an example to show some noise. Um, anyway, so uh, and this one has a little bit of fireflies. This would be clean up quite well with uh, denoise. If I ran this through denoise, this would be almost completely clean render. But anyways, the point is that uh, the other example of where you might want to uh, use VCM is when you have these sort of like hard light paths to reach. Um, yeah, so other examples I could think of would be like a small window uh, in a room. Uh, you can also use portals for that. Those are really helpful. Um, and uh, and like something like a light really far down a hallway um, where, again, like it's hard for the light rays to sort of reach up, reach out to like these, these small lights that are far away. Okay, that's about it. Um, like I said, I really like the questions. So uh, if you have any other ones, post them below and I'll answer them in a future episode. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for now.